Okay, so I wanted to have a go at um, looking at some scholars' views for you um, and trying to just pick a few things out. It's not comprehensive by any means, but hopefully might be helpful. And so we're going to look at Women in the Odyssey. And of course, in Women in the Odyssey, you'll immediately recognise Penelope, will you? Um, and you, you'll know Circe, of course, you will. And there's blessed little Nausicaa. Uh, apologies for the rather weird uh, 19th, 20th century images of those um, women. But anyway, there you go. It gives us a visual starter. Um, so just to kick off the role of women. Now, um, obviously, this is an easy sort of sense we already have for that, um, which you might like to pick up by um, taking Anne Howard's um, view on this. She maintains the expected role of women was in the home. We know that it's all to do with weaving and, and then being part of the oikos. There's a nice quote from book one where Telemachus instructs Penelope, get on with your own work, weaving and spinning. Talking is men's concern. Now, there's some controversy over why Telemachus is so cocky um, to his mother at this point, but, but that just gives us this kind of feel of, of what the role of women actually is. And uh, Howard goes on to say that there are very few choices for women in the Homeric world. Um, you're expecting as a woman to be married off quite early. You don't get much of a choice about it. Nausicaa, for example, is offered um, as a wife to um, Odysseus. Um, only a very few uh, women would have a particular status. Having said that, one of the things we're going to be looking at is the fact that uh, women are present throughout the Odyssey. Um, Fagels, who we'll talk about a little bit later, um, is very, very clear on the fact that unlike the Iliad, which is really a male book with just occasional female scenes, Actually, women are there throughout um, the Odyssey. Now, Penelope, um, if you take Penelope Murray, who um, obviously has studied um, Penelope because of uh, the fact that she's her namesake, she says this in the Omnibus article in, in Omnibus 2, throughout Odysseus' wanderings, it's Penelope who remains firmly at the centre of the epic. It is she who symbolises a goal for which Odysseus constantly strives, his com homecoming. Um, here's a way you could take a, a, a scholar's view that actually it's Penelope so at the centre of, of, of things. Um, what Penelope Murray writes is, for me, her power lies in the equality which she shares with her husband. Tradition has made Penelope the paradigm of the loyal wife, but for Homer, she is the equal focus and hero of the poem. And look at that. That's one interpretation, isn't it? The traditional loyal wife one. What Penelope Murray is offering you is this. That actually, Penelope is the equal focus and she is actually the hero of the poem. Now, there's an interesting debate that comes up um, in the latter stages of the poem, which have got a number of interpretations. Um, in book 19, um, Anne Amory and, and others say that actually Penelope has already recognised Odysseus in book 19, but she's worried about making a mistake, unsure whether it really is Odysseus, and so she ignores her intuition, and, and a, a writer called Harsh also goes along with this. Now, Rousseau puts forward something called the intuitive Penelope hypothesis. So this idea that she has sensed because she's a queen, he's her husband, they know one another. Um, there's this sense that they've actually, um, she's detected that it's Odysseus. And so that's why she suddenly chooses the test of the bow. She suspects the beggar is Odysseus. Um, and Paige, furthermore, goes along to say the poet could not have chosen a worse moment for Penelope's surrender. So there's there's this whole kind of sort of sense of of actually does Penelope really recognise uh, Odysseus or not? And this argument fits the idea um, that that people have argued along themselves that there are actually a number of authors. Homer's not just one person; it's a it's multiple authors. So what we've got here is a kind of echo of an alternate storyline, um, and that storyline is actually that Penelope and Odysseus plot together to kill the suitors and then this is brought about and actually in the Homeric version we've got there's an echo of that still left there even though Penelope supposedly doesn't recognize Odysseus in book 19 so that's their argument if you want to look at it the other way somebody um, who opposes that is Emlyn Jones he says that actually there's a deliberate sense of two recognition scenes um, being constructed uh, the first one is um, dealing with the suitors um, where the suitors recognise Odysseus, he kills them, and the second one is Penelope recognises Odysseus, and they're reunited. So he actually says it's in the placing of this recognition, clear of the other main climax of the death of the suitors, which enables the poet to conclude in a fitting manner his extended and searching portrait of the noble queen. So again, we're getting this idea of Penelope as actually a really central figure of things, and it's very important that she 
has this climactic experience at the end of book uh, or in the, in the middle of book 23 rather than recognize him earlier than that and that kind of view is also supported a bit by Fagel's uh, in his translation um, and uh, in the introduction by Bernard Knox, who um, who says this sympathetic understanding of the female heart is at work, not just in the scene set in Ithaca, but everywhere throughout the poem. And this is in order to challenge the multiple author theory. So that theory is by Bernard Knox, K-N-O-X, and he supports th that kind of sense that um, actually what we've got here is a single author. So you've got some ideas there about different interpretations of Penelope. Um, one or two other little things you could put in as well, if you're considering women. Um, here's uh, some nice stuff about the sirens. In the epic, the sirens form part of a chain of women, nymphs and goddesses, who, with their power to charm and seduce, threaten the hero's all-important homecoming to Ithaca. So here we have the idea that many of the minor female characters are a threat. This is a case of seductive feminine song threatening male action and purpose. So actually what um, Rosenfeld is arguing here in, in, in this article is women are uh, an obstacle, they're a threat to men. Maybe they're, this is quite different from Penelope, who's the focus of things. Um, and of course, Nausicaa. Um, in uh, this article by Adrian Kelly uh, from Omnibus, there are th he says there are three types of figure with which Nausicaa might be compared. Um, so you've got these three models. First, a rape victim. Secondly, a helper. Thirdly, a temptress slash monster. Um, now, he dismisses the idea of, of number one. He says that actually Nausicaa is not, um, then it's she doesn't follow through as a, a possible rape victim because of Odysseus's respectful approach of I am at your knees. Do you remember he comes to a, to, um, to Nausicaa, but he doesn't actually clutch her knees to show he's respectful. But there are plenty of other, of the other two types of women. So you've got helpers in the form of Ino and Athene, you've got a temptress monster in the form of Circe, Calypso, Sirens, um, Scylla, all, all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, what Kelly actually uh, is giving us is are these different views then of how we might want to look at women, helpers or um, hindrances, um, or perhaps um, victims. So I just wanted to finish with a few key questions you might like to think about, and you could weigh these up for yourselves. How far are women a threat uh, or obstacle in the Odyssey? Is that what they're there for? Um, secondly, to what extent is Penelope the hero of the Odyssey, which seems to be being suggested by some? Are women more of a hindrance than a help to Odysseus on his journey? Um, that's a whole question about what the role of women are. It, uh, are in the poem. Why are so many of the characters in the poem female in a supposedly male-dominated society? Extraordinary numbers of them. Is that something that Homer's wanted to communicate to us? And then finally, to what extent is it significant that most of Odysseus's divine help is provided by a female? Is there something about um, women and the way in which Homer portrays them in the Odyssey that suggests totally different things about the role of women in ancient society? So there you are. Hopefully that's helpful on some of the ideas of women in uh, the Odyssey and their role.